वी आर डिस्कसिंग चैप्टर नंबर एट क्लोदिंग अ सोशल हिस्ट्री सो वी टॉक अबाउट दी क्लोदिंग एंड ड्रेसेस हाउ इट चेंज विथ टाइम इन देशन वर्ल्ड दैट इज यूरोप वॉट वर द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन द कॉलोनियल इंडिया एट द सेम पीरियड वॉट अबाउट इंडिया सिग्निफिकेंट चेंजेस वर देयर एज फार एज क्लोदिंग of male and female is concerned during the colonial period and because of the missionary activity the western dress different forms of western dress people came into influence of this and these uh, fashion clothing styles also embodied an indigenous tradition and culture and this also become these symbols important symbols of the national movement means against the british rule so how does it change let us see the transformations when the western world clothing came into india now how do this indians reacted so we need to understand three things or three different ways in which indians reacted first was many especially men they actually incorporated some good elements or you can say some uh, elements that they like liked western style clothing in their dress it started all with the wealthy parsis of western india the, these were the first among all of these to adopt or to adapt the western style clothing if you see here these are the parsis uh, in bombay and they are wearing the trousers and the the hat that is feta so they also they added these trousers and feta to along with the long collarless coats with boots and also to look a gentleman they took a walking stick so this is how they showed or sign of modernity and progress they showed those who converted to christianity those dalits they were very much attracted with the western style clothing and this was their idea of liberation that is they are liberated from all the caste and creed system so that is that is how here also men are more affected to the new dress styles the second way in which the indians reacted to these new modern style or western dresses there were uh, some who were convinced that this western culture will affect the cultural identity traditional cultural identity and they might lose it so the way or you the use of western clothes was taken as a sign of world up turning upside down that is if you see the cartoon of this bengali babu uh, this is mocking him he is wearing western size style uh, boots and hats and everything but he is in his dhoti so this is how second type of people reacted and the third were in dilemma that whether they want to wear it whether they don't want to wear it they don't want to lose the indian ones also so they uh, find a intermediate intermediary idea or a balance now they would do what they would they would go to the office or wherever they want they will wear these western style clothes but whenever they come home they just change their clothes to the comfortable indian clothes clothes that they generally wear at home so this is how third a third uh, way of reacting to the western style if you see here this is a very famous cartoon the modern patriot a person who is wearing all the western style clothes but he still believe that the motherland is in his heart so all these were going on people were wearing it and some some notes and sources are also there as i said there need to be a solution people try to find solution that what they should adopt what not but there are certain changes of clothing that have a very turbulent 
or not very good history there were caste conflict and if if the dresses are changed or if the dressing style is changed so in the european world as we just saw the sumptuary laws they were not there now after the french revolution but in india there were rules strict rules there were strict social code of conduct for food and dress there in the caste system it was clearly laid down rules defined that what subordinate or dominant caste hindus should wear eat and what the other shouldn't okay so if some someone of the say the person who is in low in the hierarchy of the caste system if he changes his clothing styles then there will be violent social reactions i'll give an example we'll talk about uh, shanars they were called as nadars later on so in may 1822 the women of shanar caste they were attacked by nayars nayars in public space there was a princely state of travancore why because these women started wearing or covering their upper bodies and this violent conflict went on why the shanars the shanars as i said they were later known as nadars they were considered to be a lower caste or subordinate caste uh, caste they were not allowed to even take umbrella wear shoes or any gold ornaments so they were laid down rules for what they are to be doing in front of the nayars etc that is they they are not able to cover their upper bodies before the dominant caste but when the christian missionaries came under their influence shanar women when they converted they actually in uh, 1820s it happened they tailored blouses and clothes to cover their upper body uh, some hindu reformers also helped them like ayya vaikundar he also there there were some who were the social reformers they actually helped but when nayars came to know that they did what this thing they attacked them and that just tore off the women uh, clothing in the public place right and also complaints were filed in court court against the dress change because they don't want these uh, free labor to go shanars were free labor for them at first government of travancore uh, it issued a proclamation that you know just to shanar women in 1829 please abstain from covering the upper part of the body but shanar christian women especially they they adopted the blouse and upper cloth and after the abolition of slavery in travancore in 1855 this even led to more frustration among the uh, bigger castes or dominant caste because they thought that they are losing control on these shanars in october 1859 the riots broke out as shanar women were attacked in the public marketplace and they were stripped off houses were looted and chapels burned so government issued another proclamation permitting the shanar women uh, whether he, whether the shanar women are christian or hindu to wear a jacket cover their upper bodies but not in the manner how the women of high caste would do when it comes to british rule and dress, dress code how did the british react to indian ways of dressing and how did indian reacted to british at, attitudes means uh, what was the action and what was the reaction see there was a confusion there was a misunderstanding because the britishes or britishes or their their clothing and the indian clothing were conflicting the ideas were conflicting we'll take an example of turban and a hat now when european traders uh, began frequenting coming uh, to india they distinguish the indian with the as the turban wearers okay they just uh, they can't distinguish uh, first that turban is different from the hat and uh, the two headgears they are quite different 
the turban is used in indian subcontinent specially to uh, protect the body and the head from the heat heat but uh, it cannot be removed all the times see this turban is very important as far as indian community is concerned especially the uh, rural areas and there was a cultural difference it was actually not a cultural difference it was a misunderstanding because the british they got offended because the indian wouldn't take off the turban in front of uh, colonial of uh, colonial officials so you know this is about the regional identity and national identity for the indians and the british couldn't understand that if you see i'll just give you an idea of uh, sir m vishweshwaraiya he was a leading engineer and technocrat and he was a diva divan of mysore from 1912 to 1918 he was wearing he is wearing a three piece suit here but still he is ha he is having a turban on his head and if uh, we go on let me show you this picture these are the uh, people you can say european people now they are wearing hat and this hat is very different from the hat being uh, the other people who are wearing the hat this is somewhat different this is the difference in the culture of wearing hat and the ideas about this hat or the turban i'll give you one more idea of the conflict that what happened here uh, at the beginning of the 19th century it was customary for british officials to follow certain indian etiquette and they remove their footwear footwears in the courts of ruling kings or chiefs the britishers would do it and some british officials also wore indian clothes but in 1830 europeans were forbidden from wearing indian clothes at official functions so that the cultural identity of the white masters should not be undermined so as i was saying that indians were expected at that time to wear indian clothes they they were not allowed to uh, or they were uh, the people were not interested british people were not interested that indian should wear all these uh, western clothes they want them to wear the indian dress code so in 1824 to 1828 governor general am hurst he insisted that indian should take off their shoes if they appeared before him but or any british official but it was not strictly followed but by the mid 19th century lord dalhousie he was a governor general and he for the shoe respect that is to remove the shoe off he made it stricter and indians were actually forced to take off their shoes if they want to enter the government institution only the european wearing european cloth uh, wearing uh, indians were exempted from this rule but many indians were uncomfortable they can't be just uh, remove their shoes everywhere they go so there is a famous case of this defiance of this shoe respect in surat court room manak ji kowazi anti in assessor he uh, in the he was uh, working in the surat faujdari adalat that is the court he just refused to take off his shoes in the court of session judge but the judge says he insisted no you have to take it off take this shoes off and this is uh, because the indian way of showing respect to superior is to take off their shoes but manav ji he said no so he was bad entry in the court room and he later sent the letter to go the governor of bombay as a protest so the british insisted that because the indians have the custom to take off their shoes at sacred place at home why aren't they taking it off in the court room this controversy is went off indian said they urged that the shoes are being taken off at the sacred places and uh, our home it is different from the uh, the taking off the shoes at other places like court room the problem is of dirt and filth shoes has dirt so dirt cannot be allowed into the places where it is clean like the indian homes because people sleep there they they eat their uh, food on the ground 
and also the leather because it is made made of leather leather is also of filth okay and these public buildings as far as indians are concerned they are just public building everyone is coming so it's not clean so it took so many years before shoes were permitted into the court so this all went on so then came the national movement designing the national dress by the late 19th century this nationalist feeling it uh, like it flowed across india now indians started devising the cultural symbol uh, for expressing the nation unity artists they uh, looked for national style of art poets started writing national songs so there were debate about the national song the national uh, flag and there were the search for national dress also what will be the cultural identity of the people and the symbol of nationalism and there were some other people uh, like the uh, self conscious experiment were made uh, dress engaged men and women of upper caste and caste in many parts of india if you see the tagore family this is a, a tagore family picture bengal in bengal they experimented they experimented different dress so rabindranath tagore suggested that instead of combining the indian and european dress why not to combine it is better to combine the hindu and muslim dress so the chapkan that is the long button coat is better suitable for uh, men this rabindranath tagore said here i am just showing this uh, janana the name is quite difficult so it is uh, janana dana dindini so is gyanandani basically no so this is in english it is written so you, you can just write it as gyanandani tagore and her husband satendranath tagore these are other family members and if you see she is wearing a brahmika sari with a blouse a model on a western gown so when uh, when uh, gyanandani devi actually did these uh, changes she adopted the parsi style of wearing this sari like this if you see here pin to the left shoulder with a brooch and worn with blouse and shoes brahma samaj and other people other women of different uh, you can say area or region they also adopted it the style gained acceptance before long among maharashtrian uttar pradesh brahmos and non brahmos if you see this is a picture of sarla daughter of rc dat uh, he here she is wearing parsi bordered sari with high collared and sleeve sleeved velvet blouse showing how clothing style flowed ac across different regions and cultures she is lady bachu bai a well known parsi social activist if you see she is wearing a silk gara embroidered with swans these are swans and and peonies a common english flower brahmo samaj this this those people who are belonging to brahmo samaj are called brahmo but uh, these attempts were not pan india you know people or women from gujarat kodagu kerala assam they continue to wear different sari here is a picture of maharani of travancore and you see these she is wearing western shoes and a modest long sleeve modest long sleeve blouse and this style has become common among the upper caste by the 20th century then came the swadeshi movement swadeshi movement uh, we have seen about this that because indian textile were very famous and india was covering for the export around 1/4 of the uh, world world uh, good at that time but this means india was giant at, at that time as far as textiles are concerned only in bengal there were a million viewer only a million we were only in bengal in uh, 18th century but the industrial revolution in britain when the uh, things were automated that is spinning and viewing it increased the demand of raw material like cotton and indigo and this also changed the status of india because india was uh, known for different thing so political control also helped britishers when they came to india they expected and they forced the 
the peasants to grow indigo and uh, also cheap British manufacture easily replaced coarser Indian one. And when the Indian weavers and spinners they were confronted with the British manufacture or British produce which is coming to India, they were just uh, jobless. So, important textile weaving centers like Murshidabad, Mashri Patnam, and Surat they just went down, declined as demand fell. So, large number of people at that time, because of the movement going on, boycotted British and mill made clothing. But if you see that the way the, uh, you know, it was so good at that time, the British made uh, cloth and it was comfortable also, it couldn't be done uh, totally. In 1905, Lord Curzon decided to partition Bengal, that was called Bang Bhang, in order to control the growing opposition to British rule because the opposition was uh, streaming up. And uh, the Swadeshi movement developed because as a reaction to this measure of Lord Curzon. So, people were urged by the leaders to boycott British goods and also start manufacturing like matchboxes and cigarettes in their own home or um, the colonial rule where there were mass pro protest and it was assumed that the khadi, use of khadi is a patriotic duty and women were also told or requested to just throw away silks and glass bangles and they must use shell bangles. So, this is how things uh, went on. And the change of dress uh, actually started appealing uh, upper caste rather than uh, those who had made to do less and could not afford the new product. So, after 15 years, many among the upper caste also returned to wearing European dress, Western dress. So, this, uh, you know, nationalism went on. But it was, as I said, it was impossible to compete the cheap and better British goods, which were which was already flooding the market. But Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Mahatma Gandhi uh, also did various things, and as a symbol, as a symbolic weapon, he used cloth against British rule. So he, here is a very famous picture, a familiar image of Mahatma Gandhi. He is bare chested. And he's spinning wheel, you at his spinning wheel. So the most familiar image as you see here is this one. And he made spinning on the charkha and daily use of khadi. And he said that this is these are certain powerful symbols. And this will make us self-reliable or sense self-reliant. And also as a resistance to the British mill-made cloth. This is what Gandhiji's idea was. So, Gandhiji did a lot of experiment, clothing. As a boy from Gujarati Baniya family, if you see, he usually wore a shirt with a dhoti and pyjama and sometimes a coat. But he went to London uh, as a boy in 19, uh, 19 years of age in 1888. He uh, dressed like a, he dressed western suit. On his return, he continued to wear this western suit and talked with a turban and when he was a lawyer, a lawyer in Johannesburg, South Africa in the 1890s, he was still wearing western clothes. But soon he decided that this he should uh, you know relieve himself from the these western clothes. That will be a very powerful political statement. He called it as dressing unsuitably. So in Durban in 1913, Gandhiji first appeared in a Lungian kurta. And as a mark of protest of shooting against Indian coal miners, he just shaved off his head. So, on his return to India in 1915, he decided to dress like Kathiawadi peasant. And after uh, 6 and 7 years, 1921, he adopted the short dhoti to form, form a dress he wore until his death. And uh, then on 22nd uh, September 1921, a year after launching the non-cooperation movement which sought Swaraj in one year and he said that I, I can't do what uh, you know pressurize people if I can't do that thing means I cannot preach what I cannot do. 
So I will go about that what he said, but let me show you the picture of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, he was age seven here, and here he is aged fourteen. Just uh, look what he is wearing, and here he is around twenty-one. He is wearing the Western dress here also in Johannesburg, nineteen hundred, in Western style dress. But in nineteen thirteen in South Africa, he is dressed as a mark of Satyagraha. So Gandhi ji said, "I." Propose to discard at least uh, up to thirty first of October my topi and vest, and content myself with the lain cloth and just a chadar whenever necessary to protect my body, because I adopt the change because I have always has hesitated to advise anything I may not be prepared to follow. This is what he said. This one more picture of Mahatma Gandhi with kasturba shortly when he returned from South Africa. He is just dressed so simply. So at this time, you know, he experimented for a month of two different dresses, but uh, when he wanted, because it it was his duty, he thought that to be to be among poor, and uh, he just rejected the idea of uh, Western clothing, and he wanted to dress and adopt the people who are Indian and poor. That is, he wanted to be like poorest Indian. Khadi, white and coarse, was him. a sign of purity a simplicity and, and poverty so it was a symbol of nationalism again uh, according to him and a rejection of western mill made cloth so he wore short dhoti without a shirt when he went to england at a round table conference in 1931 so when he was asked that this is not suitable then he said that i am wearing less clothes the king king has already uh, is already Having enough cloth for both of us. That is, he is wearing enough cloth, my cloth also. So not all were so much uh, into Gandhi ji's idea. That is, Mahatma Gandhi has a vision that is, whole nation should follow khadi, and he said that if everyone wear khadi, that will erase the difference among the religion, caste, creed, etc. But not all were convinced. because the responses were somewhat different i said not all it means many were convinced but not all but there were some reasons like nationalist uh, like motilal nehru he was a successful lawyer barrister from alhaba so he actually gave up the western style suit but he adopted indian dhoti and kurta but this this was not made up of khadi but a coarse cloth right but these were not made up of coarse cloth i'm just saying the coarse cloth was was not used which is actually khadi it was nicely uh, you know a fine kind of uh, cloth cotton cloth he was wearing then because those uh, who were deprived those thing that those people who think they are deprived by the casteism or caste norms for centuries they were also attracted by the western dress style so unlike mahatma gandhi there were other nationalists like baba saheb ambedkar he never gave up the western style suit and also many dalits they start wearing 1910s they were wearing three piece suit and this is a mark of their self respect women uh, also they wrote that we cannot wear this because we are bound by the tradition and there are things which are not very you can say in in the society not very applicable or not possible and other women on nationalists like sarojini naidu and kamla nehru they were also wearing the just colored sarees and design instead of this white homespun which gandhi ji uh, tried to spread so these were the ideas of how the clothing changed with the with the change of time we saw we saw the western world what happened there in england and usa then we came to india and we saw how the things change what was there and colonial british rule how the thing change what were the con controversies and then national movement how it changed the dressing sense and now we are wearing everything so this is the gandhi cap just an example of gandhi did lot of experiment with the hats this is mahatma gandhi with a turban here mahatma gandhi embroidered kashmiri cap here he is wearing the gandhi cap and this is bare bare head so this was about the clothing and history of clothing thank you so much
Take care of yourself.